So another oil refinery was just hit by Ukrainian drones. And the hits are going to keep on coming. Uh, you can see this in Twitter. You can see this now in some mainstream media news. Uh, so what happened was a fire at the Luke Oil Volgorod refinery uh, took more than three hours to extinguish today. According to local residents, the fire was preceded by two explosions, the official version of the fall of the drone. Okay, so apparently, according to some accounts, there were four drones. You heard two explosions, so maybe they knocked down two and two got through. I'm not exactly sure that that's the case, but something got through and something went boom and you see this. Again, the Ukrainians keep targeting this. Russia's a big place. They can't protect all these things. All their air defense is mostly moved toward Ukraine, so it's going to keep happening. So here's the Kiev Post. Major Russian oil refinery in Volgorod region falls victim to a drone attack. Fire erupted at a major Russian oil refinery overnight. Uh, the governor said this on Telegram, a fire started at, <laughs> notice even the use of passive voice. I know I'm, I'm nerding out as a professor, but a fire didn't, like it's Ukraine caused this fire with a drone strike. It didn't just happen. It wasn't passive. A fire started at a Volgorod refinery after one of the down drones fell, he said, adding that the fire service had already brought the blaze under control by the start of the morning. No one was hurt, Bokhtarov said. Now, you can't believe them because they lie about these things all the time. Let's let's go back and look at this comment. It started, passive voice, and then downed drones fell. Well, but they claim regularly that they downed these drones that hit things. But what did they hit? I mean, how clearly or how effectively did they hit them? That That's really the question here. So let's look at this. 300 square meters. That's how much area was like actually hit by the drones, which doesn't sound like much, but they knew that they were what they were targeting. So did a downed drone that was electronically brought down or shot down or whatever, did that just happen to hit exactly where they were trying to hit or is something else at work here? Uh, it looks like it's gonna be offline for a long time to come. And if you read this little post, it said, that's serious damage, much worse than the Ustluga. That's the gas, ref I think that's the gas one up in St. Petersburg or near St. Petersburg, which destroyed a portion of the pumping statement. Such columns are designed for high pressure and temperature conditions and require internal uh, trays to be ordered from specialty vendors. We are talking complete replacement here on a normal schedule replacement uh, can usually take one and a half to two years. Now, again, I don't know the uh, credibility of the person writing this, but let's assume that they know what they're talking about. At, at an expect expedited schedule, perhaps it could take half of that, uh, provided Russia and Chinese vendors do a complete replacement of the tower on an expedited basis. So even though it was down drones because the, you know, the Russians, they, they, they knock everything down, which isn't true. I mean, they, they lie about this all the time. They hit precisely where it was going to do the most damage, it appears. Okay. The Volgorod refinery is operated by Luke Oil, an industry giant. By the way, if you're buying Luke Oil, you are supplementing what's going on here. So you might want to go to a different gas station if you choose, or petrol station, I guess it's called, in, uh, in, in Europe. And I'll show you a map of that in just a moment. The refinery is situated south of the city of Volgorod, some 600 me uh, kilometers from the Ukrainian border. Now, that's a little ways for the, the drones to be able to fly unmolested. Like, think about that. Like, Russia's a big country, and being able to get into it, once they penetrate inland, unless they're around Moscow or some other military base or something, there's not a lot of air defense throughout the rest of the country. The Russian army said air defense electronic jamming had brought down or intercepted four drones. But again, there were only two explosions, so maybe they intercepted some, but they, you know, that's that's what happened. And it looks like something significant was on fire. Okay, uh, back to this. Here's um, another article from Interfax Ukraine. The SBU proceeds with system a systemic destruction of the infrastructure used by Russia to wage war against Ukraine. By hitting oil refineries, which work for the Russian military and industrial complex, we not only interrupt the fuel supply, logistics for the enemy equipment, but also cut the replenishment of Russia's budget. Let's stop there. This is really important. 
The other day I showed you how uh, Russia had targeted and destroyed, or partially destroyed, uh, hundreds of schools, hospitals, uh, hundred, like something crazy, like 300,000 um, residences, or so, something astronomical. I Don't quote me on that, that number, but it was something really significant. They're using their missiles to do and drones to do that kind of thing. They're, last year this time, they were targeting, and th this was actually smart in the sense if they're trying to get the people to re revolt. Um, it's, it's wrong. They shouldn't do it. But they were targeting like um, electric, uh, electric supply stations and, and those kind of, uh, the grid and that kind of thing. What Ukrainians are doing is something very different, it appears. They're going after not just military targets now, but they're going after targets like oil refineries that are going to both uh, help them with oil for military purposes, but also help them with the budget. They're not going after residential buildings, generally speaking. I, I'm sure some were hit somewhere along the way, but they're taking a very different tack. Okay, let's let's look at this and try to understand a few more things here. By the way, the what I'm showing you here, the people that I'm showing you, Anton Gurashenko is one of these. A drone attack, Luke Oil Refinery in Russian Volgorod, Russian media reports, fire about 3,000 meters. The oil refinery is the largest producer of petroleum products in the Russian uh, Southern Federal District. Local authorities and Russian Defense Ministry have reported that two drones were intercepted. Again, there were four that were out there uh, and only two were intercepted. So that's another piece of the puzzle that we need to factor in. Okay, where is this? Again, it's 600 meters from the, uh, or it's not meters, kilometers from the border. Uh, so that's a, that's a ways out. Like there's nothing out here. Like I, I understand in Rostov on Don that there would be air defense, and I understand that you'd have air defense all over here, and maybe even down here where the Black Sea Fleet is. But the rest of the air defense is either here or maybe up in uh, around Moscow or something along those lines. But there's really smooth sailing between here and there, and so I think that's going to be the wave of the future where you have lots of these kind of things happening around places that just can't be protected. Okay, last couple of things. If we look up uh, Luke Oil, um, if you look at a map, you just go to LukeOil.com uh, or just Google Luke Oil. In the United States, there's not a lot of Luke Oil uh, stations, but there are around the New Jersey, New York metropolitan area. So again, if you live in that neighborhood, I would recommend that you don't um, purchase Luke Oil because you're buying Russian oil. Uh, if you live in Europe, there's a lot more Luke Oil presence. And so uh, you can go to that map. This is uh, HTTPS Luke Oil dash lubricants dot whatever. And just Google it Luke Oil Europe and you'll find the same thing. So you're not accidentally or inadvertently subsidizing this. Okay, that's all that I have for right now. Thank you for your time and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.